In this lesson, we will investigate polar graphs. We're going to have lots of little formulas for different graphs. You won't have to memorize them all, but you should be familiar with some of their characteristics. So the first thing we're going to look at at lines. Now since polar graphs, usually you use polar stuff for rounded things, circular, oval lines, mm, not so much. But here are, some, here are what the graphs of lines look like. So the easiest one, and probably the one that is most useful, is if theta is just equal to an angle. So we have an example of theta equals pi over 3, or if this helps you, you might want to think about 60 degrees. So you have a polar graph, remember that's 0, and all of these were every 15. So here is 60 degrees, or pi over 3. Well, in order to graph a line, you're saying all the points that go along that that line or that angle, well, so these would be all the positive r's, and as we talked about in the last lesson, you can have negative r's as well. So that would be the line theta equals pi over 3. Now here we have another line. In the last lesson, when we learned to convert from polar to rectangular, we learned that the relationship that r cosine theta is the same as x. Well, hopefully you remember from college algebra, if you have x is equal to a number, that is always a vertical line. All right, so here we have r cosine theta equals to 4, or we can think about x is equal to 4. So if you want to think about this being your x-axis and this being your y-axis and kind of really throwing out the idea of polar, you go out 1, 2, 3, 4, and you'd have a vertical line. When you graph that on a graphing calculator, it's going to plot the points very strangely, but eventually you would end up with a vertical line. So here we have r sine theta equals a, and again that relationship is y. And you should remember that this is always a horizontal line. So here we have y equals to negative 3, and again if you want to think about that as x and y, we would come down here on the y-axis, 1, 2, negative 3, and you would have your horizontal line. Before we go further, I want you to look at this and this. This equation has cosine. How is that vertical line symmetric? Well, it's symmetric with respect to the x-axis, meaning the x-axis acts as a mirror. So it's symmetric with with respect to the x-axis. Now if we look at this line and we have our sine theta and now we have a horizontal line, what kind of symmetry does that graph have? Well it's symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. You're going to see that as a pattern. That remember sine kind of goes with y usually going to be symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. Same thing for cosine goes with x, symmetrical with respect to the x-axis. So what's the next type of graphs we're going to look at? Circles. Now that actually makes sense for polar graphs. So if we have r is equal to a, which is the easiest type, let's go ahead and graph that. r is equal to 3. Well on your polar graph each circle is, a, is one unit on here, so one, two, three. Here along this circle, the radius is always three. So you can see that's a nice easy circle. The center is at the origin. Okay. Well, let's look at this. Well, we know the radius is three. Hmm. So what would be the diameter? Of course, it would be six. Well, let's look at this one. We have r equals plus or minus. 2a cosine theta. Well we know cosine theta has some relationship with x, but what does this graph look like? Well we could plot some points, but it's not going to help us too much. Okay, so let's say if I let theta be 0 degrees. What's the cosine of 0? It's 1 times negative 2. This is a good opportunity to remember how to plot points. So at 0 degrees, instead of going toward 0, we would go back. So that's 0, negative 2. Well, what if I let theta be 90 degrees? Well, the cosine of 90 is 0. Hmm. So at 90 degrees, we're at the pole. Remember, we call the origin the pole. 
so 180 degrees. Well, the cosine of 180 is negative 1 times negative 2, positive 2. Now, where is that point? Well, here's 180 degrees, and if I go toward that, that's that same point. Hmm. So in order to get some more points, I would have to crank out a calculator. But I'm just going to tell you this is what, and this isn't going to be great, this is kind of what this circle looks like. Right? The center is going to be right there, and the radius is going, the radius is going to equal to 1, so that means the diameter is 2. Also, it is symmetric with respect to the x-axis, and that corresponds to what we were talking about earlier. Cosine goes with x. So what about this one? r equals 6 sine theta. Hmm. Well, we can kind of go through the same thing. If we let theta be 0 degrees, but the sine of 0 is 0. So we would start out at the pole. Then at 90 degrees, the sine of 90 is 1 times 6. So up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At 180, we get back to 0. We're back down to here. And 270 degrees is negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. So even though this is 270, instead of going toward it, we'd go back. And we'd end up with that same dot. So again, two dots isn't much. We'd have to plot a bunch more points. But if you did, and again, I'm going to try to be as circular as possible, you would get, we're going to pretend that that's a circle, where the radius is 3, and the diameter is 6, and it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. All right, so that sine theta goes with y, and that symmetry involved. So if we're going to come back up here and answer that question, the blank of the circle is 2a. So looking at these formulas, 2a corresponded with 2, 2a corresponded with 6. Hmm. So what did that number equal to, the radius or the diameter? it's the diameter. So the diameter of the circle is that coefficient of sine or cosine. Now we are going to get out our calculator and just do some investigating. So you want to make sure that when you go to your mode, that's in degree mode, and then polar mode, right there, P-O-L. And since we're in degree mode, our window, let's go to window, the min and max need to be from at least 0 to 360 because again we're in degrees. This is just the default on the calculator. They go every 7.5 means it's going to plot a point every 7.5 degrees. And you can always go to just zoom option 6 and you would get that correct window. Now let's go to y equals and I'm going to clear what I have. So I just want to graph 3 plus 3 cosine theta. So if I do to zoom 6, which is the standard viewing window, let's see what I get. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of sketch that on my paper. So this one looked something like that. That's kind of funny that mine looks like that. But it is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Now let's go to zoom and come down here zoom zero, that's zoom fit, and it's going to fit that graph to the viewing rectangle. Maybe you can see it a little bit clearer. So count, how far is it between here and here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six wide. And then on the y-axis, count one, two, three, one, two, three. So up here is three, down here is three. And don't you think it kind of looks like a heart? Some people say like a bean, maybe a sideways apple. But let's see. Those are threes, and if you add them, you get six. And it's cosine. It's a plus sign. It's symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Now let's look at this one. So the only thing we need to change is the minus sign. 
let's go back to R. So you can type it in, you could clear it, or you could just get on top of the plus sign and put a minus. And I'm going to go to zoom, option zero again, zoom fit, and see what happens. Hmm. It looks just like the other one, except turn sideways, kind of on the negative part. But if you count again, this is 3, this is 3, and that total is 6. Well, now let's throw in some signs. Let's look at that one. All right, so I'm just going to clear what I have. 3 plus 4 sine theta. And again, I'm going to go to zoom, option 0. Ha! This time... We didn't quite get a heart-shaped figure, kind of did, but it had this little loop inside. But again, let's count along the, the x-axis and see what we have. We have 1, 2, 3 maybe, and 1, 2, 3. Hmm, okay, so let's write that down. So from here to here, it looks like 3 and 3. Okay, that loop is one big, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that whole thing is seven, but that the, the loop is one. Well, let's see, three plus four is seven. You might need to think about where those threes, but it's sine and it is respect it is symmetric with respect to the y axis. It's on the positive part, maybe because of that plus. Let's do this last one. So we have y equals, I'm going to clear that, 5 minus 3 sine theta. Make a prediction before you hit graph. And if you just hit graph, you might not see it, especially if you've done zoom 0. So I'm going to do zoom 0. Hmm, no loop. It's kind of really flat and then kind of rounded like that. And let's see if I count one, two, three, four, five. So out here is five, out here is five, and if I count in the y direction, two up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight down here, two here. Hmm. Five minus three is two, five plus three is eight, and that leading number is five. There's a minus, and most of it is on the lower x-axis or the negative part. I'm sorry, the y-axis, and it is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So first of all, this exercise is to show you how you can use your TI-83 to help you graph polar mode, but your mode, if that's in degree, your window needs to be like 0 to 360. And if you want to make sure it is, you can always do to zoom 6, which is your standard viewing uh, window. All right, so degree, polar mode, check that window, and you can always change it with your zoom 6 button. And so you can see that's my last thing, and you can see how it looks a little bit different. Okay. So what I wanted you to get from this is the symmetry, the pluses, the minus, and some of the relationships with those numbers.